Hi everyone, I'm Ellie, founder of Code of the Future, and today I'm going to be showing you the basics of PyCharm. So if you're a beginner learning how to code, then this video is perfect for you, as I'm going to be showing you how to navigate, set up new files, and loads of other things in PyCharm. So I'm going to dive straight into the video, put my glasses on as usual, and I'll move you onto the screen. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how you install PyCharm on your computer. So I already have it on my computer already, it's just down here. So, so we're just going to type in download PyCharm into Google. We're going to click on this link right here. Okay, we'll just cross off this here. Now you're going to go onto the community. So this is for Python, for pure Python development. So obviously, if you're a beginner and you want to start out in an IDE, PyCharm is perfect. So all you're going to do is you're going to click download on here, um, follow the kind of installation guide, and then you should have PyCharm all set up. If you're a little bit confused, there is a video on my channel where I have literally installed PyCharm at brand new on my brand new laptop. So if you are a little bit stuck on downloading and installing it, then I'd recommend checking out that video. I'll put the link in the description. So once you have PyCharm all set up, you'll have it somewhere on your laptop. So for me, I've just attached it down here. It might be that you have to go into your applications and find it that way. So I'm just going to click on PyCharm. This will pop up. Okay, so what you have here is basically the section where you're going to, you know, start a new project or you can open a new file so here so these are ones i've had previously on my laptop so this is you know part of my dissertation that i did uh, and this is just the main place that i usually do my coding so what you can do is you can click new project you can change this to whatever project you want so we'll just write new python project okay and then all you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you're in python 3 because you know Python 2 is very fast depreciating, so Python 3 is the one that you want to be in. You're going to click create, and all this is going to do is it's going to set up a new project for you. So this is where you can do your coding in, um, and for me, I have my own one here, my code of the future. I've got two on here, um, one with out underscores and one with. This is mainly where I do most of my coding on my videos, so this is my project. So it's just creating the setup at the moment. Okay, perfect. So what's happened is it's, it's set up this new Python project. It's here, this is the directory. So when you when you first did it, so when you first created it, it'll tell you exactly where to find it. Um, so this is the kind of, if you see this along here, that's exactly where it is. So slash PyCharm project slash new Python project. So this is how you set up a new project. Um, what you'll notice is there's this main.py and this is just a main Python file. Um, it's just kind of got some default text and default code in there uh, for any kind of beginners um, and usually whatever you want to write you can kind of delete all this like that get rid of it and kind of write whatever you want to write so write your own code here okay so that's one way we'll save that okay so that's one way of creating up your new project what i'm going to show you now is how you can open an, a now i'm going to show you how you can open a folder that's already in your desktop so let's say i'm just going to create a new folder on my desktop and we'll call it pycharm Put it over here so we have this pycharm file here and it's completely empty so what we're going to do is we're going to open up pycharm again now what's worth mentioning is when you on on a laptop you can force quit so you can press command quit um, and what's worth remembering is if you say you know we have this python project here so this is one that we've just set up um, i'm just going to show you what happens so if i was to cross off this you'll notice that it'll go back to where it was where you can open your own you know folder your own project whereas if i command quit this and i click exit then when I reopen PyCharm at the bottom, it will open it where you last left off. So exactly in this section, where this is exactly where we were when I quit it. So if you cross off it, this is important, if you cross off it, it gives you the option to then start a new project. So what we can do is we can click open up here, go to my desktop and we're going to find the PyCharm folder. So I'm going to click open in there and perfect. Now it is set up a complete new place. It's in my desktop PyCharm. Um, it says here, invalid Python interpreter selected for the project. So I'm going to configure a Python interpreter. So we're in 2.7 here. Now it's good because PyCharm has already told me, you know, you've got the wrong Python interpreter. So now I can fix that. So I'm in 2.7. I don't want to be in 2.7. No one wants to code in 2.7 anymore. So what I'll do is I'll go into interpreter settings and just set up. Okay, so we've got a bit of an issue here that's invalid. So we're going to go into show all. I could select 2.7, but we don't want 2.7. going to click show all. I'm going to set it up as in one of the Python 3.8s where I've previously had it. So new Python project, we'll click OK. And there we go. 
we'll apply it and click OK. So that's perfect. So now we've configured this new um, setup. And that was something I was hoping to show you later, but because that's just popped up there, how to interpret it and make sure that how to set up an interpreter, I've done it straight away so you can see that now. I'm glad that popped up because it meant that I could show you how to change your interpreter. Okay, perfect. So there we go, exactly the same as before. It gives you this main.py file. You can edit this, you can start writing your own random things in here. Um, and the good thing with this is whenever you set up a new you know, project, whether that's you do it through the first method we did or you open a, a kind of a folder like here where the main.py is, um, main.py is always it automatically with PyCharm always put in just because then you've got you know a Python file that you can st get started with so that's good so you can write you know do some coding and then you can start writing your own code stuff like that if you want to set up your own file so let's say we don't want this main.py you just click on it you will right click and you can click delete and then it will delete the file so you notice it's gone from here and it's gone from inside here as well okay so let's say we want to set up a new file let's say we don't want it to be Python let's say I don't know, HTML for example, a different programming language. You're just going to go File, we're going to click New, and then right here you have the options to do a Python file, a HTML file. You've got these options, so you know I could create a Python file and then I could name it Python. There we go, python.py. I'll go File, New, do a HTML file. I'll say HTML. There we go, HTML.html. Now if you want any other programming language that PyCharm is compatible with, you just click, that's the wrong one, you just click new and then we're going to go file and let's say let's go file and then here it gives you all the options that you can set it up so open matching files in pycharm so i could do jspn i could do jsp i could do markdown loads and loads html loads and loads of different ones. so let's say we do want we want let's do let's say we want c okay let's go okay there we go we have a file there we go we have a file perfect so that is how you set up different files and notice when i cross off them they're not deleted from here so let's say i open a python file and then i think oh i don't want that to be up on my screen you just click cross but it's still there remember the way that you delete them is by right clicking just clicking delete and then clicking ok so for the ease of the video because most of my coding videos on my channel are in python i'm going to keep this as a python file so let's go python and i'm just going to delete these files so you can on a mac just click command backspace and it'll delete them like that um, and obviously that'll be different on windows perfect so we've just got python in here okay cool so we've created a new python file now let's say we want to run some code okay so i'm going to run something really really simple print 10 okay let's go with it so you may think okay well there's this big green button up here okay i'll click run and we'll see what happens okay an error pops up now in pycharm it's really handy because pycharm is really good at telling you what your errors are so if we just scroll across it says can't open file and that's because there's no such file or directory and what that means is it is running the main.py so now up here it says main essentially whatever's in here the python file will run so notice you know we don't have a main.py because we deleted it so when you go to run this main.py python's like well there's there's no file this it doesn't exist so we can't print that so what you do is the way that you run the file that you're currently in you're going to go up to the top here click run click the run with the three dots after it and then you've got two options here so you have the main that is what is set you know the default up here and then we have python and that's our file so you're just going to click python file click it it started running and there we go printed 10 perfect so to run it again you just press the green arrow up here because it says python up here so essentially whatever is up here whatever file it is we can then run that file so you know let me do another file for example so let's do new and i'll do a python file and i'll say python 2 so we've got two python files and let's say i want to run python 2 i'll go run the three arrows and click python 2 what's worth mentioning is i've just created this python 2 right so you may think oh well i'll just click this drop down arrow there'll be a python 2 on here but there isn't the only time you'll have whatever you'll have on here is essentially what you've already run so it's important that if it's a new file that's never been run in pycharm before you go up here click run click the three dots and then click the python file you want to run so python 2 haha <laughs> perfect so there we go got python 2 and now you can move back to python you can run that one there we go 10 let's say we want to print 11 on this one so a different one so we run the python file which is this one that says print 10 
Then let's go back to Python 2 and we want to print that. So Python 2, we'll run that and it prints 11. Perfect, so that's how you set up two different Python files and also how you run Python files in PyCharm. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you now is what I did earlier, which I wasn't expecting to do straight away, is how you change your interpreter in Python. So on a Mac, the way that you do this is you just click PyCharm up here, we go on preferences, and preferences gives you literally everything you can do in PyCharm. So it's also got how you can change the font size, which I'll show you in a second. But essentially, as soon as you do this, it will probably pop up with one of these. You're gonna to go to project, PyCharm. So that's the project we're currently in. Whatever your project is called, it will say it here. So project PyCharm, because PyCharm is the project we created here, PyCharm. Uh, and then you're gonna just click Python interpreter. So this is where you can interpret, you know, change your interpreting settings. Settings. Um, there is a sh very short video on my channel explaining how you can change your interpreter if it's in Python 2 to Python 3. I noticed there was a kind of an error with that when I first got this new laptop um, and how it just automatically had, had me do it coding in Python 2, which obviously isn't ideal. So there's a video on my channel how you change it, but very, very simply it's here. You know, this is your Python interpreter. You want Python 3.8 or whenever you're watching this video, the latest Python version. So as I said, there is a video on my channel, a very short video, you know, two minutes on how you change your interpreter if you are stuck in Python 2. But ideally you want this to say Python 3.8 because you want to be coding in Python 3. Okay, so this, these little things here are the packages that you can install. So we've got pip and setup tools. This is basically any module that you want to import into your coding. And I'll explain what that means now. So let's say we want to start doing something very, very simple and we want to, I'll just get rid of Python 2 and we'll just focus on Python. So we want to run some code, you know, print 10. What we normally do is if you have, you know, important modules, we import them. So import relevant modules. So let's say we want to, let's say we want to do something in matplotlib, for example, that is a Python library. I won't be showing you how to use it today. It's how you create graphs and things. There are videos on my channel explaining that. So if you're interested in matplotlib, check out my other videos. But for today, I'm just gonna use it as an example. So I'm gonna put import matplotlib, right? Matplotlib. Now notice there's an error under here and I'll click on up here. So we have one error, one weak error. So it says no module name matplotlib. So what you can do, and I'm gonna be showing you this in, in PyCharm is you can import relevant modules for the specific project you're working in. It makes things a lot easier. The only issue is then if you create another project, those modules may not be imported into that specific project. But this is something that I think beginners find a lot easier than pip installing. I know there are advantages to pip installing, but this way it kind of helps you to do it immediately. And for, for beginners, it's a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click PyCharm up here. You're gonna go into preferences now we're back on where we were, so in our project, PyCharm, Python interpreter, and then we're gonna just click this little add up here. Now this is where you can install packages. So I'm gonna click map, I'm gonna, where you can install packages. So I'm just gonna type in matplotlib. Okay, so here it is, matplotlib, Python plotting package, and I'm just gonna click install the package. So it may take, you know, a few moments, a few seconds, maybe minutes, depending on kind of what library it is that you're installing. So we'll wait for this to install. And then once it's done, it will have installed matplotlib into this Python library and then you can use it, you know, when you start coding. So this is how you import specific modules. There we go, package matplotlib installed successfully. So when I cross off this uh, and I click okay, you'll notice that matplotlib is no longer red because we've imported it and it's there. Now something to mention, this, these little things up here, um, I'll just do an example and just put some code in here where there's an error. Um, these up here are really, really cool. It tells you if you've got kind of errors in your code or just kind of in the syntax, the way that you write your code. So PyCharm is really useful for beginners to learn how to actually format your text well. So up here it just says a little weak warning. So I'll click on the weak warning and see what it is. It says Okay, so we have unused import statement, import matplotlib. That means that I've imported matplotlib here, but I'm not using the library just yet. So that's something that you can't really, you know, overcome unless you just simply delete it. Um, in which case you would delete if you weren't using it. Um, but if you are using it to plot, you know, Python video, uh, Python plots, then obviously you'll need it. But here we have no new line at the end of file. And you see there's a little squiggle under here that's yellow, similar to that color there. And all that means is you, we don't have a, an, a final line at the end of our li Python file. And notice I've press enter and that 
has now gone. So this up here is really, really useful. It tells you when you have certain errors in your code or just syntax, and it's really good for beginners because it allows you to actually understand how to properly format your text and your code. And it just makes life a lot easier for other people when they're reading their, reading your code. Okay, so the penultimate thing I'm gonna show you is how you rename files. This is something that happens all the time. You may write a Python file and then forget what you've called it. So all you're gonna do is right click on the Python file and you're gonna go down to rename file very simply so I could change that to python3 for example and click refactor and there we go change to python3 when I go into the PyCharm project we have python3 we no longer have python so that's really really easy um, and then I guess the final thing that I'm going to show you is how you change your font size and your text size kind of your setup just so you know some people may squint at scre screens if the font's too small um, some people like it quite big I quite like it big so I can actually see my, my kind of code so all you're going to do is click PyCharm preferences now have a play around with, with the preferences in here you have all sorts of things like appearance and behavior uh, behavior editing editor all sorts of stuff so you can kind of change things in here now there is a video on my channel where I do show you how you can change the color in PyCharm um, so if you want to check out that video then I'll put the link in the description box so appearance is essentially the appearance of your entire desktop your kind of screen so I have mine set really really big so let's say we change that to 10 and I click apply there we go look everything has shrunk by 10 so that's what you see this will be what your screen looks like so if I click OK so if I click OK notice that over here the appearance you know the code hasn't changed because that's in a se separate section but all of this up but all of this up here has all changed font so to change that you're just going to pie charm preferences go to appearance and then change this to whatever number so i have 22 i quite like that i click apply change everything and then i click ok and everything is suddenly back to normal okay now to change the size of your actual code you're going to go back to preferences and all you're going to do is you're going to go down to editor go to editor click font and here we go this will tell you exactly what font you can have so you can change it you can change the coding i always have it in JetBrains just because you know standard and then here is how you changed it so if i change it to 20 everything gets smaller and it gives you a little preview on this side so that's really handy you know 10 really really small i have it 22 it's i think i have 28 i think i had that i think i had it 28 so we'll keep it at 28 just means that you can see my my screen um you know click ok and then things are, are back to the kind of ordinary place if you're interested in how to change the color setup that is in another video so you know recommend watching that video if you're interested but that is pretty much everything you need to know to get started with pycharm you know start coding away now you know how to create files you know how to create new projects how to run python files create new ones um, and also just change the setup of your environment so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you did then please like subscribe and comment and i will see you all in the next video